Let me ask you, how do we breathe when we are depressed or we are sad? Have you noticed? That's right. The exhale is longer than the inhale. Or you see a patient in a hospital, there's a sigh. So when we are sad or depressed, the breath changes. The exhale is longer than the inhale. When you're happy, what happens to the breath? It's the reverse. The inhale is longer than the exhale. And now what happens when we get angry? That's right, the breath is rapid, it's short, it's fast-paced. So what does it tell us about our breath and our emotions? They are connected. For every emotion, there is a corresponding rhythm in the breath. Now let's look at the mind. In a day, we have thousands of thoughts. The mind keeps just racing. And it's just the tendency of the mind to do so. Now let's see, if we, if I ever, or let's say, if I asked you, don't think about a pink elephant, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Pink elephant. Well, that's the level of say we have over this mind. But if I say, hold your breath for five seconds, can you do that? Yes. So we have some say over the breath. Now in a day when we have so many th thousands of thoughts, the mind keeps racing. And these thoughts have a corresponding rhythm in the emotions. And we just established that every emotion has a rhythm in the breath. So what's the smart thing to do to reverse this relationship around? We use the breath to influence the emotions. And that, in turn, influences the mind.